Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Apocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. All right, guys. We're back. Uh, Terrence is out this week. Um, but there is some things to talk about. Not a huge docket this week, but we're going to get into it anyway. Um, Micah, you watch Baby J. This is the new... Um, uh, what's his face? Um, John Mulaney. John Mulaney, uh, stand up. What'd you think? John Mulaney's really funny, and uh, uh, I remember, I, I I remember when I first saw John Mulaney, I was like, this dude looks like Opie, right? Like this yeah. dude looks like a dork. He looks like he looks like you know the Mad Magazine guy. You, you know, know what I Edward mean? E. Newman. <laughs> yeah, this guy looks you know, and and he's got a delivery like. And then I went and saw this, right? Like, ooh, wait, what the fuck? Um, so I thought I wasn't going to – Right. Like, I thought I wasn't going to like him, uh, you know, when I first uh, saw him. I think the first uh, first special I saw was, like, Kid Gorgeous or something like that. Yeah. I was like, no, this guy's really funny, man. And uh, once again, this, this stand-up is pretty great. This stand-up is unique uh, in that – it's pretty much all about like his his fucked up uh, last couple of years mm-hmm. uh, being a, a being a, a a drug addict and his stint in rehab and how like all these famous comedians came to like intervene on him and um, and and yeah man it's it's. It's really funny and it's wild to like comedians are like that's a fraternity man and it it's is. one that I and I it's one that I that I really really respect you know what I mean like those people say like the most awful things to each other and about each other and everyone else but um yo they're family yo like it's very incestuous and um and yeah he does a he does a very it's funny how you can just kind of laugh at stuff like this. Like a couple of months ago, like a couple of months ago, this dude was on cocaine and addicted to crack and uh, not crack, but like he was, he was, he was fucking hard. He, he had hard times, man. Yeah. And, um, and how, and he can laugh at it now. And, you know, it's funny. Comedians are made of much tougher stuff than, uh, than they would give themselves credit for. Yeah. Um, you know, every comedian is like, you know, oh, well, I'm kind of quiet and I keep to myself and stuff like that. But like some of the best comedians have had some of the most fucked up things happen in their lives. Richard and that's and right. And that's what comedy is, right? Tra- uh, tragedy plus timing, right? Like you got to be able to laugh at things like this. Right. Um. And he does, man, and it's really good. And uh, I hope uh, I hope people check it out. Uh, it's on Netflix. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's on Netflix. I really, I really dug it. Like, I don't want to give away too many of the too many of the bits, but like Seth Meyers and Fred Armisen and Nick Crow and Natasha Leon, like they all had to intervene on this guy. And he talks about the intervention, and it's so funny because it's like. Yo, this is exactly what you hear about how interventions are. Right. But now picture it with Fred Armisen and Seth Myers. <laughs> right. Like all <laughs> and, these comedy um, giants. Like that's so wild. Yeah, man. It's it's wild, man. It's 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 very interesting to kind of peer into the life of this dude. Um and and in his stint in his stint in rehab and mm-hmm. how he was like, you know. I I, I kind of wanted people to recognize me, <laughs> like, <laughs> like even in that moment, like even in that right, moment. like which is ridiculous. It's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I've been listening so, yeah. to and and I I got you and Terrence to listen to it as well. Um, Neil Brennan's uh, blocks the blocks podcast, like which is just him interviewing a bunch of comedians, and it's the same thing. They get like super serious about shit, and it's great. It's a, it's actually really good. It's dope to hear like them talk about stuff. And then you realize, like, yeah, they are made of tougher things because they definitely deal with other shit um, than a lot of people. But they're also still regular people in a lot of ways, right? Like, because it's easy to forget. Because it's just so easy to forget just because they're on stage that, like, 
Like, yo, they get their feelings hurt. Like, if their friends don't text them back. <laughs> like, it's just really but, funny. You're like, who cares? You're a multimillionaire. But, like, like they care because, like, they're still just some dude. Or is this something like exactly that? like they are? They are low enough on the celebrity totem pole where they don't feel like you know at the American version of royalty, right? Like, right, right. Like we we saw Roy Wood Jr. once uh, on stage, and um, and uh, afterwards we were just kind of walking around, and he was just there, just signing autographs, and he's like, "Hey, you want to take a picture?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, let's take a picture, man!" Yeah. And because he's just a regular dude, he's just a regular dude. That's that's funny, yeah. and and Very. I think I, you know, that's one of the things I like about comedians, man. Like they, like you said, they're just they're just like us, right? Like they, <laughs> you can reach out, but, and touch them, <laughs> right? But but they are, but they do something that everyone thinks they can do. No, <laughs> but they really. <laughs> really can't no it takes a it takes a different level of talent man it really does and and that's what's impressive i i can't wait to watch baby j i'll I'll have to watch it probably um friday night my my wife uh likes john mulaney a lot too so he's he's good like he's really really good i've never seen any stand-up by him i didn't thoroughly enjoy like i just think that that guy's comedy is very very good I, i was i just saw a clip of him the other day and he goes He's like, the way I talk, he was like, you would assume that I'm a gay man. He's like, I assume in heaven, um, they were when they were building me, uh, they 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 hit four out of the five like gay switches, but somebody set me down before the last one could get hit. And it was like, well, that person is gonna have an interesting life. He was like, and so here I am. <laughs> He's just funny, man. He's just a funny dude. Um I had a chance to watch absolutely nothing this week. I'm in the midst of moving. Uh, incidentally, this wall behind me will be a different color the next time you see me on the show because it's my <laughs> house is being repainted. Like uh, things are crazy. Um, so I didn't have a chance to watch anything, unfortunately. Uh, so we can get right into topics this week. Paramount has uh, announced an animated Transformers movie at uh, at CinemaCon, and the voice cast is star studded, which uh, as a person who uh, respects the art and the craft of voiceover uh it, it it saddens me just a little bit um the film will tell the story of how a young optimus prime played by chris hemsworth <laughs> and megatron <laughs> played by brian tyree henry went from being brothers in arms to sworn enemies uh scarlett johansson is voicing alita keegan michael key will be voicing bumblebee John Hamm is Sentinel Prime, and Lawrence Fishburne is is portraying Alpha Trion. Uh, I don't know who um, like three of those people are. Yeah, me or either. robots are, because um, I'm not a real nerd, I guess. Um, yeah, but, I've never been a huge Transformer person. Yeah, I've never been a I've never been a huge Transformers person. Like I like the idea, I like the concept, right? Sure. But like. There's a huge like Transformers lore that Yeah, that, dude, I don't uh, know anything about any of that. No. Like it's like a real war story, man. And um especially if you like delve into the comics from what I understand, like yeah. those comics get those comics get real like you know, saving private Ryan-ish, you know what I mean? Right. Like wow. Which is <laughs> it's like, yo, this dude turned into a Peterbilt, yo. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not, it's not that serious. Like, oh, it's that fucking serious. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, okay. Okay. I mean, so, it depends on what this looks like, right? Uh, if it, it, you know, there was there was one Transformers cartoon that came out, and it was very, very stylized, right? A lot of a uh, lot of curved angles, and it, I, I just. It wasn't the animation style that I like, and that's probably due to the fact that I am old, and when I grew up, the the art style was a little more "quote unquote" realistic, right? Like the Way robots, were, yeah, they were they were they were very blocky. The animation wasn't good, but they were blocky, and they looked like what I believed a truck that turns into a robot looks like. Um, <laughs> What an when absurd this, fucking statement. I, I know, right? But this, this is what I st- felt like a truck turned into a robot would look like. <laughs> and I'll see nothing else. I will hear nothing else of the contrary. 
but this like this I and I understand why like like some people Oh the Nickelodeon show is what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I immediately yeah. do not care for this design. <laughs> right. I don't I don't I don't like it. Like I like it's the just, proportional differences, but yeah, I no. No. Yeah, it's just kind of uh it's just kind of off putting to me. Yeah. Um and look, I I get it. It's because I'm old and nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And um and yeah. You know, I'm sure young people are like, and I understand why they do it, right? It's a, it's a quicker, uh, you can draw these quicker and you can animate them better. Like I get it. I, yeah, I'm absolutely. not, uh, I'm not, you know, but yo, like why Optimus Prime have like thick calves and, and thin quads and, and yeah. he's got like, he's got like the Dorito like body shape. You know yeah. He I mean? went, like, he, he went to jail. Like he, <laughs> just all upper body. Like he was like, nah, fuck that. I just bench. I don't do anything else. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that sort of rounded design. I mean, it is what it is, and it clearly is aimed towards young kids, and I got no problem with that. Um, yeah, I got no problem with it. But yeah, look, I don't know what the animation style is. It for me, it doesn't really matter, as I will not respect it because of the uh, the medium in and of itself. Um, <laughs> And I like it's funny as much as I, I don't respect animation as a storytelling medium, I respect voice acting even less. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Relax, everyone. Um, but no, I, I do agree with you, though. It is a bummer to see it just be a bunch of big Hollywood stars instead of actual trained voice actors, because that is a very different craft. Um, yeah. But at the same time. You're not drawing in like you're doing. I assume this is an animated movie. And while the 1986, 89 Transformers movie was fucking groundbreaking and revolutionary in a lot of ways, um, I don't talk think kids you, about death. Yeah, like you're fucking in a big way. <laughs> like shit. it literally taught kids about death. <laughs> it's like kids are like, I learned about death because of Optimus Prime. Like, okay. Yeah. And yo. the resurrection. <laughs> um, so, like, so if they're like, I can understand in the modern era, you're not really getting people to come out to see an animated movie for Transformers without some big names attached. So I, I don't I know. Get I, I get it, but it, it's kind of a shame. I agree with you. I get it. I just, um, you know, and look, some of these people, some, you know, some of these folks, especially in the new Transformers uh, movie, some of them uh, are were cast in beast wars you know what i mean and i think one dude was in beast wars and he has a couple of roles i was looking at the cast earlier today okay and um so yeah it's not like you know they're not completely forgotten right peter cullen is in these things right right like right. they're exactly. obviously not completely forgotten um how long is i how but, long are they gonna run that one right you're getting up there in age, man uh, have you listened to, have you, when's the last time you heard Optimus Prime from, uh, I guess, 35 years ago? Oh, it's, uh, it's, you can hear his age in his voice. You really they can. sound like two different people, man. They sound like two different people. One shall stand, one shall fall, right? Like that's the 80s and it's just, oh, Megatron. Oh, like, <laughs> like, Jesus, they're like, yo, bro, like, digitize me, please. <laughs> Like, like, look, it's, I the same get it. thing, it's like the same thing with James Earl Jones. Like, at a certain point, we're going to have to let it go. Like, you, you got uh, right. you, you to let him retire, and it's okay. Like, it's cool. Look, they don't – it's not like he's doing an ongoing series. Like, he don't have to work that much to 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 knock these out. But he's got to be up there in age, like in his 80s at this point. And look, I get it, right? I get it. Like, I, look, trust me. Trust me. I get it. Like, I want to hear those original voices too. Yeah. Um. But – there are, there are like you use James Earl Jones as an example. There are voice actors who can do the Darth Vader voice with a modulator and sound exactly like yeah. James Earl Jones. Yeah. Uh, by the way, big name actors. Uh, Peter Peter Cullen is eighty one. And incidentally, incidentally, I have to say, um, and, and you know, going back to your earlier point, he does not look like what I imagine a truck that transforms into a man would look like. He doesn't. So, I mean, can we even have this guy doing, doing the work? Um, 
<laughs> yeah, he he looks like he uh, he owns a restaurant. He does not look like he would be the voice for a uh, a fucking badass <laughs> robot. Um, but that's cool, man. Like his voice is iconic. Like it, it just is. But you're gonna have to find eventually somebody who can do that voice. And I'm sure there are people who can who can mimic it. I, I, I'm sure. Yeah, um, people have been doing it. People have been doing it for for decades. Quite literally, decades. Right? He's not the only person doing Optimus Prime voices. So, um, like I like I'll. That's not my issue. You know, the original guy not being able to do it anymore is not my issue. My issue is, yo, know, these these big name Hollywood actors are already getting enough work, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah. I think Chris Hemsworth's <laughs> gonna be all right. He doesn't. He doesn't need. This. I, I think he's gonna be all right playing Hulk Hogan in a few years. I think he'll be. Uh, I think he'll be all right. What, but, what is? Uh, what's that Optimus voice gonna be like? Good day. <laughs> one, one shall stand. <laughs> one shall fall. <laughs> it's gonna be wild. Also, I look. I think Brian Tyree Henry is an amazing actor. Megatron. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so weird. It's a weird choice, man. I'm very because I've never heard. I'm not trying to be a dick, but I've never heard that dude do do a, a character voice. Like I've never heard. Like, look, if you if you're telling me Paperboy is is Megatron, I support it. I just I feel like it's a slightly it's it's slightly weird. Like it's a slightly weird choice as a Hollywood actor. I don't know that I would have picked him. Now look, at the same time, like I say all that, I say all that, you know, we'll watch what, what we'll learn what we'll learn this episode, if you haven't already learned, is that Micah is a gigantic hypocrite. Uh Keegan Michael Key, who I don't think is a big actor. Uh, but he is a comedian and comedians tend to give it their all. Like they yeah. tend to want to create something, right? This whole cast a big name actor to be in an animated movie started with a, with a very famous comedian, right? Like it started with Robin Williams and Aladdin and Robin Williams gave it his all. He's not just sitting there in a booth with the script in his face reading it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like absolutely. when when you're doing voice acting, like you gotta you gotta you gotta emote. You gotta do shit in the booth, right? Right. And um and I think Keegan Michael Key, with even with just the the little bits of of his performance as Toad that I've seen in trailers, uh I think that I think that dude will give it his all. Yo, you, he's he's, un, he's unrecognizable as that voice role is to like unrecognizable. It's amazing. Um, yeah. so yeah, look, I look, I'm here for it. I just, I'm very interested to see what it's going to sound like for, for Megatron and Optimus with those two actors. <laughs> like that's, that's going to be interesting, but they're going to be young. So you'll be able to get away with a lot. Megatron. <laughs> like, right. it's, just, this is just not the choice I would have gone with. But like right. Trids form and roll out. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yo, why did you pick him? Yo, that's just so strange. Um uh, but okay. why is Tyler Rake saying transform and roll out? Tyler Rake, shut up. <laughs> God damn it. Um but okay. All right, like God bless. Um all right, next up. Next up, Black Mirror Season 6 teaser confirms a June release. The first look at the lovely Selma Hayek uh, Penalt. Is that her name? Did she get married? Uh, I, don't recon- I don't recognize whoever she married. As a, uh, as a, as a point of fact. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck that dude. Uh, Black Mirror is coming back, and it's much sooner than you think. Netflix has revealed that Charlie Brooker's hit series returns in June for Season 6. Once again, the show boasts a laundry list of top acting talent. This season's roster includes Aaron Paul, Bitch, uh, Anya, uh, Ayana, Anyana Vasan, uh, Annie Annie Murphy, um, Auden Thornton, Ben Auden, Ben Barnes, Clara. I I don't know who any of these people are outside of Aaron Paul. And Danny Ramirez, that sounds familiar. Uh, Josh Hartnett, Kate Mara, Michael Sarah. Uh, okay. Ooh, mm. Mm. Rory Culkin, Selma Hayek, and uh, Zazie Beetz. Those are those okay. Are like this, that, that cast started getting real good at the end. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, okay. 
The teaser prom is exactly the level of dysfunction and darkness and dystopia fans have come to expect. Yada, yada, yada. Go watch the trailer. It's, uh, look, I, I like Black Mirror. Um, let me ask you a question. Do you think Black Mirror uh, has gotten better or worse since it kind of came stateside? Because I feel like the the British Black Mirror episodes had a little more like bite to them than I the think, American episodes. I don't want to say worse because then that implies that I actually think Black Mirror, uh, once it came stateside, isn't good. And I right. still, I'm not saying, I, but I agree with you. I, I actually think the the British when it when it was purely a British thing, it was quote unquote better, right? Like I, I think it's more d- just different. But I did like the. It felt way more uncomfortable to me. Yeah, like what was yeah, it? Was like, it that Black Mirror episode where was it Black Mirror where they had the kid? who got a message on his phone like he kept getting messages like you need to go to this pin and you need to do this and like rob this bank and all this other shit and at the end it's like this big reveal of like why this person was doing it to him it was like a really fucked up episode and i and i like i felt uneasy the entire time and like there was, one, sure there was, where, one. There was one where this guy I think it was like a, a politician. He was like a British politician, and like they were, they, he was being forced to do things, and eventually he had to like fuck a pig or some shit. Yeah, that was the very first the episode. Square. I'm pretty sure. I was like, Jesus Christ! Like that was, and again, you know, maybe this is just like nostalgia hitting me, right? Like maybe this is just me being an old man, right? Like, oh well, they weren't as good as the classics, right? But, right. I feel like the British ones had a little more bite to them than, say, the Molly Cyrus one, where there was, like, a talking, like, Tamagotchi or whatever that was, you know, that someone was obsessed over. Like, Yeah. Yeah, I think think they were just – they felt like, hey, here are things that are sort of societal no-nos. Um Here's the line. Let's let's step over the line a little bit. And and the U.S. doesn't seem to have that, or doesn't think that the audience can handle it. But like they can, they can. They like they the can. British version. They they like the British version. So like just just go for it. Yeah, like like there was uh, there was one with um, Bryce Dallas Howard, a very famous one, right? Where yeah, it's mm-hmm. like you 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 rate people, right? Yeah, it's like, like a social weird social media thing. Yeah, and I I really enjoyed that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like because it was it was like it wasn't horrifying, right? Maybe I, maybe I just maybe the British ones were a little more horrifying, but I I thought that was ac- excellent like commentary, especially here in the U.S. on how we Yikes. on how humanity treats each other. Yeah, especially in this like you know I I need likes to in order for my existence to be validated culture yeah, that we live in. I, I don't give a fuck look, about I'm not a, people <laughs> to, to care what uh, other people think of a lot of things about look me. i'm not i'm not saying i'm i'm keep not saying i'm better please. than that please right keep subscribe look look i post i you think i've taken these pictures because i want uh for, for purely for the satisfaction no i want people to like the fact that i'm taking pictures of toys yeah, i'm a grown I mean, man yeah, you need that dopamine toys. hit. You're not above it. Yeah, man. I'm not above it. I'm not above it. I'm just saying. I recognize oh, it. No, don't let it run your life. <laughs> that's, exactly. That's, that's basically it. Um, yeah, look, I, I'm here for more Black Mirror. I don't think I watched season five. Um, I feel like my wife got really terrified. Like, I think I got turned off, honestly, like in season, I, I want to say it's season four. When they had that episode where it's like, stay in this house overnight, it's, you know, it'd be like a video game thing. And it was like really scary. And if you can do it, you can win all this money. And it was like a giant spider. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, I was like, I was oh, done. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> fuck right off. And then I think the maybe the last one I saw was the like, whatever season was like the Striking Vipers one. Uh, which was which was a wild episode <laughs> with Anthony oh, yeah, Mackie. That was wild. <laughs> that was a wild episode. Um, and uh, what's his name? Yaya Abdul Mateen, wasn't it? Yep, that's right. <laughs> what was the line? Kiss me, nigga, so I know it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, it was hilarious. Holy shit, that was a great episode. 
I laughed my ass off. I was like, this is making me uncomfortable. Also, it's funny. Um, all right, next up. Um, Craven the Hunter will be rated R. Sony's Craven the Hunter. So I'm just going to leave it there. We'll talk. Uh, I, I have a new section just for this episode that we'll talk more about Craven the Hunter in a second. <laughs> Let's watch Micah lose. Let's see if we can give Micah an embolism live on on the show. Um, do you think a Craven the Hunter movie needs to be rated R? Is is let me let me rephrase that. Is Sony making a bad choice by making all of these hero um, or these like villain movies they're doing rated R? Because I'm pretty sure, yeah, um, the Venom movies are rated R. Rated R? The Venom I don't know movies? if Morbius was, but re- but Venom, I'm pretty sure it was. Look, an R rating is um, one. Creatively, I don't know. I've never watched these movies. Um, But financially, yes. If you want, if you have this big. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Venom movies were PG 13. I apologize. I thought they were. Okay. Okay. If you, because if you have these big comic book movies, you, you want to push the envelope, but you want as many people to see them as possible to you know, recoup your investment in this, sure. in this thing. So, you know, having a rated R movie immediately like lowers that. Now let's give this thing the benefit of the doubt. And I think you should, I think, I think you should. Uh, no, I'm being very generous. Let's give this thing the benefit <laughs> of the doubt and say that like, it's going to be a good R rated movie. Like, like the last good R rated movie, the last good, nothing R rated movie that I saw was John wick. And mm-hmm. that was, uh, you know, say what you want about that franchise. Like story ain't there. It's not, it's not. Um, but it's incredibly stylized. And it's a good time. I don't think that the folks at Sony who are doing this stuff uh, have, and are having an, uh, an artistic uh, brain uh, brain cell. I I saw what the, you I saw what Venom looks like. I saw what Carn what what uh, the the Carnage movie looks like. I saw what Morbius looks like. It all looks the same, which is fine, right? It looks the same. It's got a style. It's in the same world, but apparently, it's just got like a blue filter over everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a Sony really dark. It's a Sony shtick. Yeah, I just it, it's not it's not it doesn't look good. It looks it like a not. it looks like a puddle of 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 rainwater in 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 an yeah. urban jungle. Yep. I, like I'm so, telling you, Sony has that like they what do they call them loots right? Like in you know video editing, it's just basically like certain movie like the color grade and everything else it's all basically in a in a loot file like i feel like sony is just like we have the sony loot dump it on your movie okay it's ready to go <laughs> like they don't give a fuck venom carnage or venom let there be carnage the original venom morbius uh and i would bet craven the hunter all will look exactly like they were shot in the the same exact time frame and area as the social network all the same. Hmm. Right? Another Sony picture. Yeah. Um, Which is a good movie, incidentally. Look, I'm not saying that Sony makes a bunch of bad movies. I'm saying that they don't know how to make comic book movies. Um, I would, I no, I'll say it. They make a bunch of bad movies. <laughs> like, they do. <laughs> like, they're not a good film studio anymore. Like, they're, they're if they ever were. Like, I don't know. What's the last big hit? What's like the last big uh, hit Sony's had? Wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it James Bond? Didn't they? Uh, didn't nah, they, yo, you don't count that as a James Sony Bond? movie. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Uncharted. <laughs> like, uh, look, those Spider. Look, look. Say what you want. Those what? Spider-Man movies are hitting. Those Spider-Man movies are hitting. Yeah, like, they're like hitting that. not because of Sony. Let's get. Let's let's knock that off. They 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 created my favorite Spider Man movie uh, in in uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, sure. Um, and I still you know I know it's kind of 
fashionable right now to hate on those Tobey Maguire movies, but I really do. I, I really do like those first two movies. Um, again, maybe that's nostalgia. Um, maybe that's just me being a Spider-Man fan. I really like those two movies, but I think you're right. I think most of their movies aren't great. And I don't think Rhino, uh, uh Craven the Hunter is going to be good either. Like, I, like I hear, I'm all I hear who's on your mind. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I, should, well, mm, 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 mm. I, I, <laughs> that was a Freudian slip too. I don't think Ronald's going to be good, guys. Yeah. Um, no, I don't mind different like takes on characters, but can we can we get a classic version of a character, or at least a, a reasonable facsimile of a classic version of a character before we start like changing shit? It'd like, be nice. is this movie? I'm so curious about this movie. I'm so curious about it. I've, well, I've never seen Venom. I've never seen Morbius. I've never seen the second Venom. I'm so curious about this that I might watch a trailer for this. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> so the trailer, the, the first trailer has been shown at CinemaCon um, this, um, this past week. I have to imagine you're probably going to get a trailer here pretty soon, released publicly, because it, it's it, it feels about time. Um, I'm really hoping like next week. Uh, um, Were there what what was the uh, what was the buzz on the trailer? I, I've heard no buzz. I, I, I've heard zero in the way of buzz. Uh, I've I've heard things about it, but I wouldn't say there's. Wouldn't say it's buzz. <laughs> I wouldn't call it buzz, but I have not heard like, "Oh, this is terrible." But yo, they're gonna turn they're gonna turn Craven into John Wick. Yo, that's my that's my. They want Craven to be their John Wick. That's my. What prediction. do you mean by that? They're going to turn it into a um, into a uh, just a bloody action movie, right? They're gonna take him. They're gonna make Craven a very one dimensional character, and they're gonna they're gonna turn it into they're going to try to turn it to into a style over substance type movie and um that's my prediction um who is directing craven the hunter i don't know uh jc candor or chandor one of the one of the two names um uh this person has directed a most violent year Okay. What does that sound familiar like? with? Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Isaac. Yeah. Um, Triple Frontier. I saw that movie. That's not a good movie. I, I saw that movie. That was That's a, that, a, was a that was a prime that was a prime Netflix movie. Yeah, it was you not good. I mean? Ben Affleck did um, not want to be there for that movie. <laughs> he looked miserable. I mean, he was in the middle of his drinking and shit. Like he just he wasn't putting in work. Like he just he was just being dragged along through that film. I did I did not care for it. Uh and I don't know what Margin Call is, but uh it got nominated for best original screenplay uh in uh 2011. Um yeah, that came out like right around the same time as The Big Short, I believe. Okay, I I don't um yeah, I think so. This guy makes action movies, right? This guy makes action movies, or this person makes action movies. I, that's my prediction, man. Like this dude is going to be there, John Wick. And uh, I, I have a different prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is there's an old story um, about a man or a, or a being who um, often used to say. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. And I think that is what you're going to get. You're going to get Craven the Hunter. I speak for the animals. Um, and he is going to be a uh, person who protects animals, which is the exact opposite of what that character actually is. He He's going to respect animals too much to kill them in this movie. See, but he, see, this is, the, this is why I say he's going to be their John Wick, right? What started this whole John Wick thing off? What set John Wick off? The death of an the dog. Yeah. Yo. Uh, yeah, you know what? And Sony and Sony doesn't have an original thought, yo. They like, know. <laughs> like they see that John Wick, this 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 absolutely like nothing movie, 
like story it's wise, it's a it's a it's a four film franchise, yo. <laughs> it should have been, it should have been a really fun first... one movie, one movie, right? And now it's a four film franchise about a guy getting revenge on people who killed his dog and stole his car, and I and I and I look, I really enjoy it. But yeah, I don't think, yo, get ready, get ready. Uh, uh, apparently, I it's I can't wait. Aaron Taylor Johnson <laughs> brings a a bloody R rated Craven the Hunter footage to CinemaCon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gonna be a big old fat mess. Um. All right. Well, let, then let's um let's move into the new uh, section okay, that I on, have. Hold on. Hold on. According to the Hollywood Reporter, the footage shows Craven stopping a caravan of poachers and quickly killing six of them, including by biting one man and spitting out part of his skin to the into the camera. It also revealed that classic. the classic Spider-Man villain, the Rhino, will be in the feature uh, with actor Alessandro Nivola playing the role. In the footage, only his arm is shown, and he appears to have gray skin. <sighs> All right. So, uh, the comic book movie Scuttlebutt. Um, that is the section I have this week. Um, so let's start there. The villain for Craven, um, Craven the Hunter, uh, will in fact be, or a, a character in it. I don't know if he's the villain actually. The character in it will be the Rhino. The Rhino is supposed to be featured, a classic Spider-Man villain. Here's the problem. The uh, from people who have seen the trailer say that it appears that he isn't wearing a suit. He in fact transforms into a rhino. <laughs> I I have a quote a, from a, um, a rhino man. <laughs> I I have a quote from uh, from the actor. Would you like to hear it? I would love to hear it. Quote: I only transform physically. In the final moments of the movie, so it's just a classic villain role. It had a it had a interest a really interesting complex psychology and personal history to draw on, and the movie no. has a time jump in it, so the character changes a lot from the way he is in the beginning of the film. It was much of it was as much of an acting opportunity as any other film I've done. Um he transforms into the right. Like that's, that's literally what the actor said. <laughs> They're going to have him become a fucking rhino man. <laughs> it was so, he sucks. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I need, this is, I need to heed this warning because this is going to be really hard to um, not do. Do not hate. Watch this movie giving it $800 million. Please. Please. For the love of God, don't do that. Don't do what you did with Venom. Don't do it. Look, I know, like, you're waiting for Morbius to say it's it's Morbin time and all the funny memes and everything. Yeah, I get all frankly, that. Don't even do that. Don't even do that. Don't, yeah, they put know. the they put the movie back at theaters. They thought they thought they were right. nailing it. <laughs> right. Only to make it yeah, angry. get ready. Get ready for a bunch of I'm craving craving puns or some dumb shit. Right? Yeah, like, you're gonna ruin that joke. Um. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't hate watch this movie. If you want to see it, that's one thing. Uh, I think you made poor life choices, but whatever. Um, but don't hate watch this movie and give this movie millions of, upon millions of dollars. Um, him becoming like literally transforming into a rhino man. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. It it's funny because it makes the Paul Giamatti rhino seem that much more reasonable, and that was slightly unreasonable to me. But just slightly. <laughs> Why can't they just do the fucking mechanized suit from like Ultimate Spider-Man? It looks fun. Just get a big, just a big brute of a guy and put him in a suit. Give him the I, I nickname the Rhino beforehand, right? Like he played like high school football or something. And like that's his name. And then, you know, he decides like, you know what? I'm going to put a big fucking piece of metal on the top of this thing and uh, I'm going to call myself the Rhino. Fuck these people. Like there was like there was a version of Rhino, I can't remember which version, but there was a version of Rhino that like that like he transformed into the Rhino, 
but he wasn't he wasn't like rock steady. You know what I mean? Right. Like and 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 he couldn't like change and then change back like the Hulk. You know what I mean? Like it was I, I, I don't know, man. And then there's another version of the rhino where he is convinced to put on a suit, much like Scorpion, he was convinced to put on a suit and can't get the suit off. Right, right, right. And and that's and that's what made the character slightly sympathetic. Right. right? Like so I I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not I'm not <laughs> looking forward to this, man. I I, I, I <laughs> Do you realize I Do you realize that with this movie coming out, we will have had represented in in cinema form the entire Sinister Six across like three different movie uh uh studios. That's sad. Like I just all I, I want know, is Peter Parker in the suit to fight the Sinister Six. That's it. That's all I want. That's all I want. The, the not the not the not the Sinister Two at a time, and then not see the other four at any other point. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like just give them the six. I look. I still stand by the best way to play that is in one movie all of those guys get together they kick the shit out of Spider-Man the next movie or the in between times he gets he gets the black suit however you want to make that happen and then he uses the black suit to beat the shit out of these guys in the next movie and then he eventually pulls the black suit off and then you get venom blah 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 that's here's, that's that should be the arc here's the thing about the sinister sticks right they are um, they're a bunch of alphas, right? They all think they're a bunch of alphas, right? And that's how Spider-Man should be able to take on six people at a time. Because they because, can't they can't cooperate. Because they can't coexist. They can't cooperate. Right. Like they that that's where they are, that's where they are vulnerable. And Peter Parker is smart enough to realize that, right? It's they're led by Dr. Octopus, who is you know, so he's he's full of himself. That's his problem. He's super arrogant, right? Right. Craven is, you know, he's always been a loner, so he's not, you know, uh, um, a team player. Rhino is dumb, and people make fun of him for being dumb. So don't make fun of me for being dumb. Gargan is super insecure, right? Which is why he's 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 a thug that got tricked into wearing a scorpion suit and then later got the venom symbiote. Like he's like he's he's hyper insecure. That's his problem. Um Mysterio is too busy trying to fool people and shit. Like like no, nigga. And who else am I thinking? And and um vulture. and the vulture and the vulture is going to butt heads with Dr. Octavius because he's also a guy who like ran a company and shit and thinks he's hot shit. So like, and, and Spider-Man uses those, uses their personalities to exploit their weaknesses. And that's how he overcomes this shit. Not like, not this, pe- like, and that could have been super interesting. The dynamic between those villains could be the movie. Right, like yeah. that could be the actual like Sinister Six movie that they're trying to get to, right. because, and they kind of did it with No Way Home. They kind of did it with No yeah, Way Home. Yeah, they kind of did. They kind of did. So I don't. I fuck, mean, man. to to me, if you're because the talk is that Holland is signed up for like another like six movies or some shit like that. The build of his next three movies should be the sinister six like that should you need to be putting characters in place to to come back and just be that needs to be the sinister six right like if you want to introduce norman in their universe in the in the proper mcu uh universe do it like i like the the point has been made by other people like you saw the prototype for the pumpkin bomb in captain america um or um, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, right? Like you saw it in in the the like that end sequence with those terrorists. Like 
he could normally could be a, just like a military kind of like domestic terrorist, right? He doesn't have to follow the exact same CEO, you know, your dad's, you know, your friend's dad type of shit, right? Um, you can bring him in. You can bring in. Uh, you already have Vulture, though he was somehow in a weird other universe. Figure out how to get him back, like for fuck's sake. Um, you you have Vulture. You have um, you could re you could either redo Craven, which doesn't seem likely at this point, or just pick a different pick a different roster. But you need him to take on six characters. That is one of his biggest moments: is to take on all six of those guys and kick the shit out of all of them. Because nobody's done it. There's been no other hero who has taken on six of their big villains all at once. It's unique. It's a unique thing to him. And you're right. The story isn't, it's not in a way, it's not a Peter Parker, Spider-Man story. It's a villain story, right? Like you get those, like you show, like Parker is a, a part of the movie, obviously. But you, you, you build to those six guys coming together across three movies. And in the third movie, when they actually take him on, or in the second movie, when they take him on at some point, all of those story building beats are all between those guys. Right? Like that, that's actually, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. That makes sense. Like much like how infinity war was kind of like high key from Thanos' perspective. Yeah, it was. Like, like, yes, we follow the Avengers as they're trying to come together, but we follow, we get a lot more of Thanos and we, we, we follow his story and we figure, we figure out why he is doing this in some warped way. Right. Right. And that's what, that's what this movie should be. Yeah. This movie should be, uh, 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 essentially a heist movie. But the heist is killing a child. <laughs> Fair enough. And that's how you have to market it. <laughs> do you like heist movies? Do you like do you like kids? We don't either. So like here's our movie. Like, wow. Um so yeah, I like I, I don't think this Craven the Hunter movie is gonna be very good. Um Certainly not with a transforming rhino. By the way, that just goes to show you how behind the time Sony is. The character transforms in the last moment. Oh, great. Like every shitty early 2000s comic movie, the characters get their their reveal of what they look like at the end of the movie. That sucks. That was one of the yeah. greatest things about Iron Man. They were just like, here's in the trailer. This is what he looks like. Yeah. You ready? He gets it, cool. at, the, he gets it at the end of the first act. <laughs> yeah, get in the fucking suit, man. Let's let's go. Nobody's I'm not trying to watch two hours of a guy who's just like, and I'm Iron Man. Like he says it, and literally he puts on the suit and flies away. Well, fuck off, like that. <laughs> so yeah, they they're still playing by the same terrible t early two thousands rules. Um, second bit of scuttlebutt um, inside the MCU this time is uh, the top um, talk uh, for actors being chosen for Reed Richards. At the top of the list, it seems like it's Adam Driver, aka Kylo Ren. Um, I like this. I like. I can dig it. Like, I, I think this is a good role for him. Probably a better better role than Kylo Ren was, to be honest. Um. So this dude can act. Yeah. Um, he's got. He's got. He's got. Um, gravitas. Right. Yeah. I, my one hope is that he can kind of become this character. Um, whereas I don't necessarily see Ben solo, right? right. I see Adam driver in star Wars, yeah. right? When he, uh, in, in a marriage story, he was excellent in it. Right. Yeah. Like he can, can evoke that like passion that you need. Right. But I also just saw, I saw Adam driver delivering a very, uh, passionate performance. And I kind of want, I, I hope that he can really disappear into this role. Like I hope he can kind of transform into this role. And part of it for me, you're going to have to do something with that hair, man. Like it sounds stupid. Oh. 
No, no, it doesn't. He needs. He's got to cut it. Like you gotta, you gotta have the like my two dads gotta, fucking leave it to Beaver haircut. You do. You gotta it's, have it's the. Really you gotta have the great temps, right? Like you gotta, you gotta do something with this. You gotta do something with that hair. Yep. But I, I, but I think he's a very good actor. And look, Mar- Marvel's casting has never been an issue. You no, know, they never. a lot of times they see something that other folks don't see. Right. I remember, remember when everyone was like, you're getting the human torch to be Captain America? Bleh, right? And now, now look, look at him. Right. <laughs> so I have no doubt that if uh, if Adam Driver is on their mind, um, I, I, I have no doubt he'll do a good job. Quite frankly, if they've got that dude on their mind, that kind of gives me an idea of how they're going to play Reed Richards and I'm really into it. If it was John Krasinski playing Reed Richards, he would be like the infallible hero, right? Like like yeah. there's this and and while that's great, that's not the Reed that I want to see on screen. I want to see the re, uh, the Reed I want to see is a Reed that so Reed Richards and Doctor Doom they're the same guy. They're the same guy. The only reason that Reed Richards is not Dr. Doom is because he has his family around him to keep him grounded, to keep him in check, to keep him focused. And Dr. Doom doesn't have that. He covets it. That's why he's incredibly bitter, right? And you, you, the his family being around him, around Reed, is what what keep is what keeps him grounded, as evidenced by the fact that in 1610, fucking he turns into the maker, right? Exactly. Exactly. He turns into he turns into one of the 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 greatest villains that universe has ever seen. Um, so if they're going to play Reed like, I don't mean to be offensive when I say this, okay? I, I I don't mean to be offensive when I say this, but I don't know how any other way I can describe it. To me, Reed is kind of like a very high functioning neurodivergent person. Yeah. Right? No, he is. Like he is, which is why, which is where the obsession comes from. Now, when you say that, like, you gotta be real careful in how you play that. Because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to be making fun of the neurodivergent because it's not something that you want to make fun of. No. But you also don't want to overcorrect like they did in that last Predator movie, where I'm sure they had all the positive intentions in the world, but one of the characters had autism and it was kind of treated like a superpower. And oh, oh, uh, the Predators, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That and that's not, that's not, you know, what you want to do either, right? So it's a it's a fine line. I think Adam Driver can pull it off. Yeah, um, I think so. I'm and I'm I'm and 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 if done correctly, I think that that would be positive representation uh, yeah. for for folks who want to see themselves in something as a superhero, right? I just hope I don't know, man. I'm super excited if if this is true, I'm I'm super excited for this, even more so than last time because we're going to get a complicated read. We're not going to get the stalwart hero who knows everything. We're not going to get a a a a, a, a cartoon Reed Richards. We're going to get a real character. Yeah. Look, I, I think driver is. I think driver is a really good choice. I, I really do. Um, some people can't see it. I get that, um, but I think maybe if you've only seen him, and I, I don't mean to be um, dismissive, but I think if you've only seen him in Star Wars movies, um, then your understanding of him as an actor is is pretty limited. Um, again, a Marriage Story is very good. He's done a number of things, House of Gucci and stuff like that. Like he's able to play vulnerable, kind of manipulated guy. He can play angry. He can play um, very sincere. He can do comedy. Like he's he's he is a pretty well rounded actor. And the idea of him playing sort of 
if they play it that way, sort of a high functioning um, neurodivergent uh, version of Reed. Yeah. Okay. I think he'll nail it. Uh, I don't think he is. I don't think that's out of his wheelhouse at all. Um, but I look forward to it. I, I hope they choose him actually. I, I think it's a really good choice. Here is a theory that I heard that I, that I like that at some point, if you, if you can, you introduce the maker and you get one of the previous guys who's played Reed to play the maker, which I think I kind of love that. Like the guy from Tim stories. Um, yeah. Movie. That's the only problem though. You got to get like one of the other guys to, to like, I look, I'm even okay. <laughs> I'm even since Krasinski exists in the multiverse, I'm even okay with Krasinski playing the maker. Like I, I kind of like that. Like that would be kind of yeah. fun. Um, Cause then it it kind of it kind of doubles down on like like here is a different version of this guy and he is you know he is why he's basically their Doctor Doom. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you would probably get the Council of Reeds before you get uh, before you get the Maker. Mm, yeah. Um, and I think that would be I don't know kind of interesting. Um. But, you know, they can literally cast anybody because, as we've seen, variants don't have to just look like look the same, right? No, they do not. Like, Loki has a, a woman variant, uh, a black man variant, and, a, and an alligator variant. So, right. right. Uh, <laughs> which is, you know, makes casting all the much easier when somebody kind of blows their career up. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Best of luck with all that, Johnny. Um, dumb, dumb. Um, next up, um, Fantastic Four movie villain scuttlebutt rumor. Okay, not verified, but rumor. Galactus. Come on, man. Come, come on. Does come that on. feel too big? Does that feel too yes. big for? It? Yes, it, it feels, feels too, too big. big. Yes, it does. It feels, it feels too big. Too big. It, feels, it's, it feels too high concept for people, and they've and they've tried it. They've tried it. So what, in Eternals. No, they've tried it in the Tim Story movie. Remember? No, that was a cloud. <laughs> that was just, it was just a friendly cloud, just just breezing on by. Um, now, in in the in in sixteen ten, Galactus was like um was like a bunch a, of robots. Like an, yeah, it was like an alien, like a bunch of like robots that they and they were the Galactus, right? Like the, that was the name of the species, uh, because you know that's not as silly as having a big, you know, a big purple man with a big weird helmet uh, floating around in space, eating uh, eating planets like apples and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I I think. Um, Yo, know, the Fantastic Four have so many other villains that they can, that they can. Yeah, you know, Galactus feels too big to me. I still think they should go with Mole Man. I, I think it's a good way to start to start them, right? Like a ton of enemies, and they all have to like, you know, work work together to take you down, right? And it's also a classic villain, right? It's their first villain that they fight um, in the comics. Now, here's the thing. It's it's only a rumor. I actually hope it's not Galactus. But I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Or not a hypocrite. Uh, I'm a bit of a bad nerd here. I think Galactus is a wildly overrated villain when it comes to the Fantastic Four. And the reason why is because his story sucks. <laughs> like his classic interaction, first interaction with the Fantastic Four. I think it sucks. Hey, I'm coming to Earth. I'm going gonna, gonna to eat you. I'm going to eat you. Um, okay. Here's the thing. Take this thing and get out of here. All right. I'm going to leave. <laughs> like, what? Like, that's uh, it? Like, come on, man. Now, the talk is that if it is Galactus, um, the talk is that Silver Surfer will be introduced ahead of Fantastic Four to kind of, you know, so he'll be introduced somewhere in the universe, you know, to sort of tee it up. I I hope it's not Galactus. I, I really do. I, I like... I don't know how you how you do Galactus. I'm not saying you can't do him, but I, I don't know how you do him properly that wouldn't ignite the entire world to show up to fight him. 
He's a planet need- eater, dude. Like he's a planet eater. Where is everyone else? And I know that's a stupid lame question that people ask. Like, where are the Avengers? But like, kind of, where are the Avengers? Like, where is everybody? If a guy who's like, I'm going to eat the planet shows up, you know what I mean? It's just a bit weird. Yeah, you. So you don't need you don't need the like the planet to 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 rebel against Galactus. You, oh, so the the comics realize like, oh shit, we've we've created a being that is omnipotent damn near omnipotent like how are we going to defeat him uh we'll just make something and we'll call it the ultimate nullifier and he's afraid of it right and that's what you use to defeat galactus like to your point that it's kind of lame right it it is super lame dude it's just it's so like unless unless you're using galactus to like represent climate change or something like that like i i I could see that by the way yeah i fine i get it but they're already creating their thumbnails about how galactus went woke i like i got it we got it (laughs) (laughs) but nah man you can like the scrolls have been introduced and uh they're about to. that's a much better it's much better choice they're about to they're about to get their their shine in uh, Secret Invasion. Um, you can have them fight that. You can have them fight Annihilus. Quite frankly, Annihilus could be uh, an Avengers level threat. But yeah. you you know, like there's so much there's so much more you can do. Um, and I don't want his their first villain to be Doctor Doom. No, like, Doctor no. Doom has to be Doctor Doom has to be a friend of me. Like that's the whole like that's the dynamic between them. Like, yep. fr- like he invited them to their fucking to, to his fucking wedding, for God's sakes. Yeah, and then he then he then he threw it off because he found out that Johnny slept with his his soon to be wife. Oh, really? So, <laughs> that's funny. yeah, yeah. Before they met, but she didn't tell him. Uh, Victorious didn't tell him. And didn't tell Doom, and he was like, "Well, pff, fuck this. You can't. Nah, <laughs> you let that Yuck. man in you." Get out of here. Gross. This <laughs> <laughs> dude is mad and secure. Yeah, of course he is. Shocking. <laughs> He's your favorite character, incidentally. Um, yeah. Go uh, <laughs> this guy speaks to me. Excuse me. Um, yeah, look. Galactus, I think, is too big. I just, like, quite literally and, you know, figuratively as a first villain, I, that's too much. The great nullifier. Yeah. Here it is. Whoa! <laughs> And then he just runs off like, yo, that's pretty bad. Like it's, and look, I'm sure in the MCU, they would make it like way more in depth and interesting and stuff like that. I don't doubt that. It just, on its face, it sounds fucking ridiculous. So it's just a MacGuffin. Like, and like not a good one, not a good one. Right. Um, someone just throw a rope on Reed and get it done. Like, (laughs) I'm tangled up. Um, so yeah, we'll see. So that, that's the, that's the comic movie scuttlebutt this week. So, um, I enjoy all the sort of fan casting and stuff like that. I, I like that news. I don't always bring it cause some of it I think is just utterly ridiculous. Um, oh, casting for Galactus. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> uh, I mean, it could be literally anybody. At this yeah, point. like, like I, I would. Uh, he's got a great voice. I, I mean, he does. Like a Spaniard Galactus is not, not what I would have uh, imagined. See, but you know, but I don't know what Galactus sounds like. So, right, I, you know, fine. Does he uh, talk? Yeah, Galactus talks. Does he have a lot of, of chat? Does he, does he do a lot of chatting it up with other? Uh, <laughs> Like ego, like who's he talking to? Like he he talks, he talks to his heralds and stuff, right? Like, oh yeah, that's go true. And find find me a planet to eat. Bring go out there and do my grocery shopping for me. <laughs> and, Basically, uh, bring me an apple, <laughs> right? Earth. Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> All right, let's um let's talk. Uh, what the fuck? Brought to you by JTD from the Edit That Out podcast. Nineteen people fell ill with diarrhea. Uh, in this place last year after drinking untreated water that may that many believe to be from a natural spring, but which was in fact just a creek drainage brimming with pathogenic 
uh, pa- pathogenic bacteria. Uh, so you know how like Coors has like, oh, we get this, we get this beer Rockies. from the Rockies or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, like there's it's, it's there's a waterfall of bad beer in Colorado or whatever. Yeah, yuck. Like that's what people were doing. They're like, oh, look, I'm gonna drink this water from a rippling brook. Nah, nah. It was just a, it was just a dirty old creek. Mm. <laughs> okay, so that sounds like some sort of like local corruption. I mean, there's a lot of corru- ah. Russia. I will give you a hint. It is one of the fifty states of the United States of America. Oh, I, I originally I was going to say Flint, um, <laughs> Michigan, but. <laughs> Um, Mississippi? No. No. Uh, Montana. Yeah, Republican run. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) One person was hospitalized in the outbreak, which ended only after authorities diverted the water source. Um, The outbreak follows a trend that sprang up in the U.S. several years ago of drinking so-called raw water. Uh, that is untreated, unfiltered water collected directly from freshwater sources that is often claimed without evidence to have health benefits. Yeah, uh, this is this is a real thing. The, this is like the the like the crazy like anti vaxxers. They they also are into like the raw water thing, which is just like non potable water. <laughs> like, they don't even put that shit through PVC pipes, my nigga. Like it's not good for you. Yeah, drink it. Drink it up. Drink as much as you want. I hope you shit your entire intestines out, you dumb fuck. For proponents, have argued, proponents have argued that raw water avoids undesirable uh, components of municipal water, uh, which they identify as disinfectants, fluoride, uh, imaginary mind control drugs, traces of pharmaceuticals, <laughs> And heavy metals such as lead from pipes. Cool. They also Great. suggest without evidence that raw water can contain unique probiotic and other natural <laughs> minerals and compounds that can improve health. Uh, health officials have pointed out that untreated, unfiltered water is a clear health risk given the likelihood of uh, pathogenic bacteria, viruses, and parasites, as well as naturally occurring contaminants such as mineral deposits. Um, look, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I don't. So, like, are these people like you can lead a dummy to water, but you can't make them not drink it? Like, yeah. These people are stupid. <laughs> look, the people who this happened to by mistake, that's different. But these people who are like, I can't wait to drink non potable water. No, I, I'm fine with it. Like, bathe in it, you know, pour it down your gullet. Go ahead. <laughs> Look, the world doesn't need you. It's fine. If you if you, if you think the government is putting in secret fluoride in your water so that your teeth don't rot out of your head, well, you know, they, they do, but it's to help you. So, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Good luck. Fucking stupid wine moms on the internet. I shouldn't drink water that's filtered. All right. All right, Becky. Just fucking goes around. Um, my story, uh, this frozen fish salad was one, was voted the worst dish in the world. Um, this particular salad, I won't say the name. Um, it's from the coldest inhabited region in the world. Uh, was recently voted the worst dish by, um, Readers of online food magazine, a food guide. Um, it it consists of diced white fish such as broad white fish, elma, and muxin, combined with onions, seasoned with oil, salt, and pepper. That doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, at least not so bad as the dishes we featured before. The problem with the salad is that the fish is not only raw but frozen solid, which is which is to be expected from a dish uh, from this region uh, where temperatures routinely get below 70 degrees Celsius, minus 70 degrees Celsius. The dish is usually served as an appetizer accompanied by lemon wedges and um, alcohol. 
When I think of anything that is the worst place in the world, I think Russia. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. It is um, in in the in the Gurkha salad, a Russian uh, fish salad. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it gets minus 70 degrees Celsius there, and they serve you frozen chunks of fish in oil. Like, it's not frozen. Like It's not like, you know, caught fresh, then frozen, then you buy it in the store, defrosted, then you make this. No, they're chunks of frozen fish. Why? Why? <laughs> defrosted. Now, I guess they were like, yeah, we tried, but it's mad cold outside. Yo, that's funny. <laughs> I used to want, like, I want to travel more uh, around the world i love traveling um i i there was a time where i wanted to go to russia uh, that time has passed i i don't i don't need to go there i, I mean uh, you know nah nah i i got nothing i got nothing yeah no thanks i, I used to i used to date a girl who um i used to date a girl who a black girl who who uh tried to who took russian as an elective mm -hmm. she wanted to speak russian for some reason um yeah we didn't make it yeah, uh, yeah. because I, I i don't i i had no idea and uh she was like yeah i want to go one day All right, buy i don't yourself. know it's kind of weird to me yeah, yeah that's kind of weird girl knock it off the fuck out like of me. all the european languages i mean i mean russia is a, a superpower i guess right is it is it? I mean, you tell me. I, I, it is I, not. I, I, <laughs> they want to be. It isn't. It ha it has the same GDP as Italy. All right, like a country like that if is I'm gonna a lot smaller. Like if I'm gonna learn another language, if I'm gonna learn an Asian language, I'm certainly not gonna learn Russian. You might as well learn so, Mongolian. It'd be it'd be more useful. <laughs> right. <for you. laughs> Fuck out of here. Russia sucks. And look, if you're Russian, you listen to this like. Hey, like, that's not cool. Don't say that about our country. Dude, you know it sucks. That's why you're not living there. You're in the U.S. now. Knock it off. <laughs> I mean, you know, right, exactly. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. No, thanks. I'm good. Also, like, I've seen enough dash cam videos and now, like, it's not worth it for me to go there. I'm good. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Just throwing yourselves on the hood of people's cars trying to make a dollar. Yeah, that's the sign of a great country. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Trails this week. Um, Taika Waititi's next movie, Next Goal Wins. Uh, I'm going to kind of blaze through the, these first few. Um, yeah, this looks cute. Like It looks like a funny funny little movie. It looks like a Taika Waititi movie. Yeah. Uh, which means it'll probably be good. Um, and, uh, you know, still repping those, still repping people that, that don't get... Uh, the shine that um that they probably should right. so um i i support it for that don't know if i'm gonna rush out to see this though like uh if this hit streaming uh i i definitely watch it yeah absolutely but, uh, yeah this this is this doesn't feel like a uh i need to see in theaters thing um strange way of life also is shot very weirdly this is a very weirdly cut trailer um, it feels like it's supposed to be, sh um, film like a Western, like an old school Western, uh, Terrence asked the correct question. Is this a comedy? <laughs> Jeff, that was funny. It's very weird. It's a very weird trailer. It's shot like one, it's shot like a trailer, like a very, very old school trailer. And two, it's giving me like telenovela vibes. Yes. I, I was I, I was thinking the same thing actually. Yeah. Um, I, okay. I, yeah, I don't know what to say about this, man. I, 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 you know, it looks, it looks bizarre, and it looks absurd, slightly absurd, and I, I don't know if I, if this is my type of absurdity. Have you ever watched any of those telenovelas, like on Netflix or anything? No, my wife has though. Um, she watched one about like a. I think she watched one about like a, a a woman who was a superstar who like got started dating a baker or some shit, and um, 
she she really liked it. Like she's she'll she'll watch anything if it's a television show. So mm-hmm. she's seen a lot of like, and she's branching out to like other you know other countries. Like as long as they have a as long as they have an English dub, she'll watch it. Yeah. Um. So she's seen a couple, and she's into them. I tried watching that Baker one, and I just I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, your face tells me everything I needed to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah. Fair enough. Um. Yeah. This. I. I've. I've watched a little bit of what was that telenovela? I think it's. Is it? It's not Ugly Betty. What's? What is it? Um. It's something. Um. Oh, Jane the Virgin. My wife watched that. It's ridiculous like it, it is it's supposed to be comedic to a large extent but that's a telenovela and it's just it's just very fucking silly like it, it just is um so okay I, I i don't know i don't know where to I, I honestly don't know where to put this um in my mind i, re- I really don't um after that is the trailer, if my computer would act right, is the trailer for the Equalizer 3. Um, I didn't watch Equalizer 2. I liked the first movie. Um, I didn't feel uh, a pull to see the second movie uh, that much. Maybe I'll go back and watch it. Uh, this looks fun. Denzel looks like he's having a good time killing a lot of people. Uh, I'm in the same boat. I didn't watch the second Equalizer. It. Um, I, I like the first one. But the second one, okay, uh, you know, I just never got around to it. Like, I'm not a, I'm not, not against, against watching it. it, right? I, I just didn't, you know, I just didn't get a chance to watch it. And I think, like you wore said, that Muslim beard. I was like, what's happening in this? Like when I saw that trail, <laughs> I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> Shit looks ridiculous. And like you said, right? Like Denzel Washington is obviously having a good time because the guy doesn't do sequels and this is the second sequel of a franchise yeah. that he's doing. So he's obviously having a good time. Um, I would lo- I, I really wish that this uh, idea, this came out with Denzel Washington. I really wish this came out about 15 years ago. Oh yeah. He would have um, been in his back. Yeah, like uh, you know, like man on fire, Denzel. Yeah, like yeah. this, like this stuff isn't new to Denzel, right? Right. Denzel, That's I a great know. movie, man. That's a great. It movie. is, man. It's a really great movie. And if if I could get these movies with that Denzel, yeah, then yeah, this would be a this would be an absolutely no brainer, no hesitation. I'm going to see this. Yeah. But right now, I'll just uh, I'll I'll watch the second one to see if I kind of. Yeah. get into it i would imagine that i won't be lost no I, I, I feel like yeah I, I feel <laughs> i feel like i could see the third movie and be like okay i got it he retired to italy like i, I got it. like <laughs> i didn't need to see anything else from the second movie but i do like antoine fuqua and yeah. um yeah he makes like man movies right yeah. he makes dick flicks right he does in fact and uh so i might watch the second one uh, my dad really liked it. Surprise, surprise! An old black man kicking everybody's ass, and my old black man father liked it. <laughs> right? He's uh, like, well, this movie what? is speaking directly to me. Mike, Mike, you see the Equalizer? Oh man! Like, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and now and now that I am an old black man, yeah, uh, you're, you're I can obligated. I can appreciate this. Yeah, right. I gotta I gotta represent. I gotta support my people. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> trailer for Dune Two. Um, this is not a very well cut trailer, and it's not from the actual company. So I'm I'm reluctant to believe this is actually what they put out, and not what these people deemed would be a a, a trailer. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this. Uh, I did see the Onion put out an article. They were like, "Dune Two trailer promises to pick up uh, right where you fell asleep in Dune One," <laughs> 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 which I thought was fucked up, but. Look, I like Dune 1. I, I thought it was great. I just thought it was beautifully done. Um, it was a super interesting story. So I'm, I want to rewatch Dune 1 and then go right into watching this. So Yeah, I feel like I have to, right? Especially because of Dune 1. While I really enjoyed that movie and I didn't think I would, I, I really enjoyed it, but it was half a movie. And yeah. um, like it ended exactly when it 
felt like it was about to kind of take off. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, and I understand that was by design. So, I'll, I'll do a rewatch, uh, a very, very long rewatch of uh, yeah. the first one. Is this supposed to be a trilogy? Because I know these books are like. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to end up being oh. a trilogy. Which is fine. I mean, I look. I like. I like good hard sci-fi. We don't get a lot of it um, these days. We get more sort of run and gun kind of sci-fi. So I'm. I I like stuff like this. That it is, um, it's not necessarily a slow burn, but it's a. Um, it's like it feels like a very deliberate movie. If if you, it you feels know, like it, it was a. It feels like it was adaptive. It's it's dense, is what it is. Yeah, it's not. That's, that's a better word. It, it's not quick. But it's not it's not complicated either. No, it's, just, it's not a complicated story at all. It's just dense. And there's a lot there. Um, so yeah, I and I like Denis Villeneuve, man. Like, yeah. like I still haven't seen. Uh, I still haven't seen um, uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Yeah, that's a long I, watch. It's like three hours. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta carve out some time to watch it. But I like Denis Villeneuve. Beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Oh my God, that'd be I I think. I think he's doing, he like he's doing genre movies, right? Like he's one of those like, like filmmaker filmmakers, right? He ain't making movies; he's making films, right? right. But he's doing it with genre properties, like Dune. Yeah. Well, right? and he's so, also doing stuff that people said couldn't be done. Like a lot of people say, you can't, right. you can't follow up Blade Runner. It's too perfect of a movie. Yeah, he did, and he fucking nailed it. And even like hardcore Blade Runner people are like. No, nah, I was like, nah, that shit was like, that's exactly what I was hoping we'd get, but never thought we would, right? Like, he didn't shy away from the source material. Like, he he leaned in, and he leaned in hard. Um, they said Dune was, you know, largely unfilmable, which I think he's proving that that's not true. Like, it actually, right. that absolutely is. Um, look, uh, I don't actually give a shit about this franchise anymore, but uh, I'll mention it. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, by the way, the title should definitely be The Ballad of Snakes and Songbirds. That just flows better. Um, but um, this is a prequel to the other four movies um, with Katniss Everdeen. I, I don't care. Uh, I watched the first movie and I liked it. I watched the second movie and I liked it less. And then they were like, there's a third movie. And I said, I already care. I, I stopped caring. So, um, never saw the third movie and never saw the fourth one. There were four. Yeah. The, the last movie is, is I think there was four. I, I think the last one they broke, broke in half. Jesus. Okay. Um, oh, so like the third, like the Harry Potter, the, the, the thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I saw the first movie. It was fine. It uh, wasn't really what I expected when I expected uh, when I heard about this uh, franchise. Look, I didn't read this book, um, but I think that these movies, for me, suffer for not being for not going in hard enough. Yeah, um, everybody compares it's a YA this novel, to in fairness. right, and I get it. Everybody compared this to Battle Royale because it's like children fighting to the death. But you know what makes Battle Royale, uh, the Japanese movie, um, special for me? It it's the level of violence, and it's not right. it's not violence for the sake of violence. It is the juxtaposition of these children. We don't expect children to be violent, especially like hyper violent, especially towards each other, like killing, right? It's the juxtaposition of of seeing these school children, these innocent people, you know, delinquents or whatever, right? Brutally, viciously murdering each other. It's why Lord of the Flies exists, right? Like it's right. why Lord of the Flies is so special because there are children murdering each other, and this franchise it does it, but it does it in a in a, PG. in a young in a young adult PG thirteen kind of way. Yep, exactly. And and that doesn't do it for me. I I need I want I want those kids to die, and I want to see it. <laughs> you need it to be way more visceral. Yeah, crazy. Um, 
All right, let's talk to let's talk about the two trailers we really give a shit about this week. Um, second trailer for the Flash. Um, yeah, it looks really good, guys. Like it does. It looks fun. It looks really fun. Um, I think people. I think it's. I think it is fair to say that Snyder squandered this DC property. Not not just the Flash, but the DC properties. Like. They're pulling this off. Like, look at this shit. It looks great. It looks fun. I, I, I like it. I don't get it. Like, I, I don't get how they just could not get it together. But I guess this this is what happens when you hire like good filmmakers and like work on scripts. This is what happens. I don't know if this person is a good filmmaker. I don't know who who did it. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's the guy who did it, Andy Machete. Okay, he's a good filmmaker. Um. This is also what happens when you don't – when when you allow – like you can have – you can have a, a, a figurehead that – a project manager, right? right? You can have a project manager, but that project manager has to let – has to trust the people under them to create. Right. And when you have a project manager that is – a little too hands on, mm-hmm. right? That it 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 doesn't necessarily work all the time, and um, it worked with the first Wonder Woman until it didn't. Yeah, right. Like that's the perfect example that I can think of. Um, this movie looks like looks like it is. It still got the 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 color palette. It looks like a movie that Zack Snyder would have produced, right? It looks like it belongs in his universe, mm-hmm. but it also looks fun. It looks different. It it looks like uh, – it just looks good, man. And, um, I, you know, I know everybody's making the joke about like, wow, this Batman movie has a little bit of flash in it or whatever, right? Like, but nah, yo, it really looks good. It really looks good, but, and it makes also, me wonder. Yeah, go it, ahead. It makes me. It makes me wonder, like what this this entire universe could have been, if mm-hmm. if we just had Zack Snyder, kind of overseeing things and not necessarily like bending to his will about like Justice League and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm curious. I'm curious because I, like say what you want about Zack Snyder. Like the guy has a good eye, right? He just, he, he, he knows how to make something look good. Yeah. It just, it's just his, I just need somebody else to do all the writing. Yeah. Directing. <laughs> well, yeah, no, not, not, not all that slow-mo either. Like that yeah. shit gets on my, nerves. there's a lot of that in the trailer. I've noticed. Um, but like my thing is, where where this is where this is gets interesting is you could have had you could have had this like you, you you could have and it would have been fun as hell and you know that idea of like these look like marvel movies yeah those movies people enjoy guys people enjoy them they have fun with them and that's kind of the point is you should want to read or you should want to see these movies this just looks like a blast. Everybody looks like they're having fun. Um, like this is the same with the Blue Beetle trailer. People look like they're having fun. And when they look like they're having fun, as an audience member, you feel like you're having fun. And if it all works out, then you are. Um, so I, I don't know. This this is working for me. I, I, I think this is a um I think it's a good trailer. Um Michael Keaton seems pretty like he's having a good time. Um, but the one thing I will say is, you know, in reference to the, you know, there's a lot of Batman in this, um, in this flash trailer. I think that has more to do with like them trying to get people to the theater. So that the, the idea of the main actor being a problem, um, isn't, isn't driving people away. Right. Like is not happenstance that you get, a good amount of Michael Keaton because people are like, oh shit, he's back as Batman. I got to see that. Right. And so it's like, ah, Ezra Miller, whatever, but I want to see Batman. Right. Like, 
Yeah. That could just be a marketing thing. Now, also the Flashpoint story, Batman's a big part yeah, of it. Had a, he had a, it had a lot of Batman in it. Like, like let's it not did. forget. Like, like, it had a lot of Batman and it had a war between the Amazons and the Atlanteans. Like all the, like there was a lot going on in Flashpoint, man. Right. Um, and Flash was just kind of like along for the ride for a lot of it. Right. So um, if you're adapting that story, it's not that crazy to have Batman right. like prominently featured. Um, but it looks good. Affleck looks dope in the suit. Like, yeah, okay. Like we'll we'll see what they do. But very interesting. Very interesting. I like the trailer. I thought it was dope. Um and then lastly, the Transformers Rise of the Beast second trailer. Look, I love the first trailer. I thought it was dope. I didn't think they needed anything else to show me to get me to see this movie. I was wrong. Look, I stand by my idea that I think the Transformers as animals is just silly. Like, it just looks silly um, in live action. At the same time, like, it doesn't look like the CGI doesn't look bad. It's just like those are clearly robots. Like, they're not, these are not robots in disguise. Like, that's not a real bird. <laughs> um, but other than that, like, action wise and stuff like that, yeah. And then it's Unicron played by Coleman Domingo, which is crazy. You you let me know that. I didn't know that. Um yeah, this looks fun as hell. Uh, I'm all in. Yeah, man, like again, I'm a big hypocrite, right? Like I've been talking shit about like these robots turning into animals. Um like and it's silly, but like of course it's silly because it's supposed to be silly. It's a transform. It's no sillier than a robot turning into a, a giant, a giant robot turning into a car. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, and look, man, I, I was never, I was barely into transformers. I certainly wasn't into beast wars, but I gotta tell you, man, this looks fun. I'd be, I'd be 100% lying if I didn't say that this looks like a real good time. Like it yeah. made me want to go back and watch Bumblebee. Like, I've yo, Bumblebee is a good it. movie. Yo. It's a and good movie. Yeah, and that's that's what everybody says. So, I it's on Paramount Plus. I'm gonna I'm fire up that Paramount Plus account that I have, and and I'm gonna sit down and watch Bumblebee one of these days because before this comes out, because uh, otherwise I'll be lost. I won't know what's going on. Yeah. I, I, okay. Um, <laughs> Again, also, this is a movie you can jump right in. Also, um, it is not lost on me that these two trailers have been using uh, prominent hip hop tracks yep. to uh, to market their movie, and that just puts a smile on my face. It does. One, it's it, it, one is it's 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 the hip hop that I that I grew up listening to, right? Yeah. It, that that I listened to in my teens, and two, uh, you know. Uh, for many many years, people were like, "Ah, oh, rap, rap music, rap is crap." There, now look mm -hmm. at it, look at it. Yeah, it's look everywhere. It. It's everywhere. It's it. pop music. Fucking rap is pop music now. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, um, look, I got to tell you, it's also not lost on me that uh, yeah, y'all ain't slick, Paramount. You ain't slick. Don't think I didn't notice. That you put RC right at the end of the of the big action sequence at the end of this trailer. It's not happenstance either. Like, good. Like your first female um transformer, and they're like, fuck that. Put her right in the center of the action. Show her off. You're talking all that shit. Here you go. It's right in the trailer. Cause there was a big thing, like when they were like, Well, you know, RC's gonna be in it, and you know, it's like this idea of the character being trans or whatever, and all the right wing people because they're reactionary douchebags are like, ah, I'm, I'm so upset by it, and they're like, Yeah, cool, trans. Yeah, they're all trans, motherfucker. They're transformers, right? right. <laughs> all of them. It's in the fucking name. Who cares? Are you are you sad you can't fuck the robot? Relax. Yeah, it's a fuck. robot, yo. It's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I expected. All right, come out of your mom's basement. You'll be all right. Um, but I it's would not have sex with Peach Toadstool or whatever the fuck her name is. Like, all right, all right, guys. Oh, she's too much of a girl boss. <laughs> Fucking dickless wonders. Um, but yeah, it's not. It's not lost on me that they put her prominently in the um, the final action sequence. Um, cool. 
Great. Also, um, clearly at some point they can just allow humans to control a transformer, which is awesome. Can't wait for that shit. Um, yeah. All right. It's like, yeah, man, take the keys. I was like, okay, so like he's getting a transformer suit. I guess is he controlling Bumblebee? I I guess in that next sequence. I mean, that's what's implied. Either way, I, I'm here for it. Like this shit looks fun, man. It looks really, really fun. Um, yeah, I can't wait. June ninth. Oh, that might be. I might be trying to see That's that right before I. That I might be trying to see that right before I leave town because that looks real fun. <laughs> if we get a screener for that, yeah, that that will be the last movie I see um, before I move. Um, it looks fun. All right, that is it for us. Late night for us, but uh, we will see you guys next week. See ya.